So one of the things we talk about on my show all the time is our food sources here in America, you know, all the subsidies, corn, all that stuff. I was watching an interview that you did, and you were talking about just a plant-based diet and how it can affect our bodies and our minds and the economy and all this stuff. So I thought it was an interesting uh, place to jump off with you on this, is how important is food in general to the environment? Just the stuff that we take in, how important is that to the bigger environmental picture? There's a friend of mine, he was a cattle rancher, feedlot operator, and he says that the fork is one of the most dangerous weapons we've ever held in our hand. And I think there's some truth to that. Again, I don't want to dictate to anybody what they eat. My mm -hmm. wife eats meat, and I don't really give her a hard time about it. She eats it rarely, but she does on occasion. Yeah. She eats a fair amount of chicken and fish and what have you, things like that. I'm a vegan myself because I, I think it's good for me. I really feel very good when I eat a plant-based diet, mm -hmm. and it's certainly good for the ecosystem. It just takes so much more water mm -hmm. and land and energy to grow a pound of beef than it does a pound of broccoli. Yeah. So that's something we have to consider, even for the meat eaters to eat, as I suppose my wife does, you know, just a few times a year or a few times a month if you're a big meat eater. Mm -hmm. Just cut down a bit and see if you can live with that and see how you like it. And there's other substitutes now. You know, in the old days, that was what we had to do to survive. It's a different world now. You can be up in Fairbanks or Juneau, you can get veggie dogs and broccoli in the middle of winter. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a different world that we live in. Yeah. And so uh, I think a plant-based diet is a very good way to go. And certainly when you're growing it yourself, it's quite economical. You can make very cheap vegetables if you do it that way. If not, if you're buying lots of, you know, plant amendments that are expensive and water, tap water with coming from a meter, you know, you can wind up with $8 tomatoes if you're yeah, not careful. For sure. So, how, how much of it is that we're just hugely separated from our food sources? You know, they do all these studies yes. where it's something like the average uh, chicken that you might get at Trader Joe's came from 2,000 miles away, or something crazy where only 100 years ago you pretty much lived in a village or pretty much close by where you were getting your food from. It comes uh, such great distances now. People just want their damn grapes in the middle of winter. They come from Chile, of course. You know, they want different things. You can do that, but it's, it comes at great cost. I try to eat seasonally as best I can. You know, nobody's perfect, but I go to the farmer's market there in Studio City yeah. to supplement what I can't grow myself. But I've been growing food since I've had my very first home in 1979. Before that, I was apartment renter. You know, and I, I, couldn't, I couldn't grow food. Back then, they didn't have community gardens the way they do now. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't have, if you're in an apartment, you don't have a piece of dirt in your front or backyard, you can get part of a community garden. If they don't have one, you can start one. Yeah. There's a lot of that available. But I've shown my kids, who are now 36 and 37, who both are master gardeners, I've shown them where food comes from. It doesn't come from the Ralph's tree or the Safeway bush. It comes from soil and water and sunshine, and that's how you make food. What do you think about the, the other part of it? Not just the stuff that you're putting in your system to stay alive, but sort of the therapeutic part of it. Because I have, I have an apartment, but I have a little little front area where I grow some Fantastic. tomatoes and some mint and you know a bunch of herbs and things like that. And I find just clipping the stuff, I actually find it calms me down. It gets me away from my phone and all the electronics. And I feel like that's an important piece of it too, just for your mental state as a human, you know, you're reconnecting into, to that. You're into the big one now. I know I myself have one of these smart devices. I'm looking at, hey man, there's a we're, great website for Yosemite. We gotta look at this website for Yellowstone. <laughs> Put the thing away, put it in your pocket, turn it off, get to Yosemite, get yeah. to Yellowstone. If not, if you're not inclined to do that, you don't have time, just get out to your garden. And you don't have a garden, get part of a community garden. As you're suggesting, if you get your hands in the dirt, it's the ultimate therapy. You feel connected again yeah. to what our real riches are. I think I get my paycheck from Sony Pictures or from Warner Brothers or Universal Studios. That's not where I get my real paycheck from. That's where I buy a bunch of stuff stuff like Home Shopping Network stuff, and some stuff perhaps a little more important than that. But mostly, mostly I'm buying stuff with the money that I make at my supposed job. My real income, I think, is from the soil and the water and the sunshine to grow food and be part of that system. That's what we really need, clean water, clean air, and food. And that's our real wealth. That's our real paycheck. I yeah. Think. Now, you're not telling Sony that it would be okay to pay you in composting, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it was a nice sentiment. I, might, I, yeah, I think I may have misspoken. You may yes, have misspoken. I, I might have misspoken there.